So hello and welcome to the video 6 in this series. Um, so last time we did already parse the binary data into the first level of the protocol, the NCTRS protocol. Uh, this is this, uh, we pass it into this NCDOTM type, which you see here. And um, now we will go to the next level, which is the first level of real satellite telemetry, uh, the so-called uh, telemetry transfer frame. So uh, let's have a look, let's change here. Um, what we see, uh, yeah, we have this NCDOTM type, and uh, so uh, this basically has some header information, and then we have this NCDU data, which is a byte string, and this contains one of the telemetry transfer frames. So um, we, of course, then have to pass this again. Basically, same principle, it's just a little bit more complicated than the NCTRS setter. So uh, again, let's have a look into some documents to see how this telemetry transfer frame looks like. So this is uh, the CCS from the CCSDS homepage, um, which is some kind of recommendation how this should look like. And uh, most standards are built on this uh, for, for spacecraft data. So you often find these telemetry transfer frames in CCSDS packets, which are then contained here in the application, spacecraft application data. Um, and uh, basically, most of this is used internationally. Um, sometimes uh, agencies or, or countries have their own implementations. So ESA, for example, has their own POS standard, PAS standard, which we call it the, the packet utilization standard, how exactly the services on board of a spacecraft are um, defined. And um, but the lower levels are very often the same, so that they can have an easy um, exchange between uh, agencies and also the ground stations. So the ground stations are uh, distributed around the whole globe. So uh, it would be good that you can talk to them if you need to need them for talking with the satellite or with space probe or something like that. So uh, this is what a, a telemetry transfer frame looks. So you have a, a transfer frame, a primary header. Um, then you have a secondary header, which is optional. Uh, in fact, I have only seen until now just one mission which uses this secondary header, all other don't have them. This is uh, for the Galileo uh, satellite navigation system. Uh, then you have, a, again, a data field. It's similar to the um, NCTRS um, uh, protocol. But here, then we have um, the spacecraft data in packets. So you have the frames. And then you have inside packets. And these packets then contain very often parameters um, or also various other data, image data, measurement data, instruments, temperatures, whatever. Yeah. So uh, then we have uh, the operational control field, which is not important for us now, but it's important for uh, commanding. So the other side, when you send things to the satellite, uh, it says here is optional. Any anyway, uh, it is so you have uh, this operational control field flag here in the header, which specifies if this field is there or not. And then you have a frame error control field, um, which is a cyclic redundancy check with a special um, polynomial um, binary polynomial uh, data check. And uh, yeah, just if there is some um, error on the transmission of the frame so that you can determine this. Uh, we will have a look at it probably next episode or something like that. Um, not for now, we just, for, for currently we just want to pass this. Um, and uh, you see also a little bit of difference to the NCTRS protocol. NCTRS protocol did not care about uh, uh, packing things tightly together. But here we have real satellite data. So if, for example, imagine uh, like a space probe like New Horizon, which is uh, now beyond Pluto, which is very much into the Kuiper belt. So um, when it, it did the flyby and of Pluto, uh, afterwards it took it uh, for about, I think, one and a half years to downlink all the data, the images and, and measurement things uh, from Pluto to downlink them because you have a very limited bandwidth for such high um, distances. So uh, naturally, you want to pack as much together into as less data as possible. Also, uh, very often special um, compression algorithms are used uh, to reduce the data size. Okay. Um, Let's 
have a look. So we have first uh, we have a version number, then we have this again the spacecraft ID, which we already have seen in the NCTRS data field. This should be the same basically. Uh, doesn't have to be, but mostly it is. Then we have this virtual channel ID, which we also had in the in the field. Then this if this operational control data field is present or not. Then we have a master channel frame count and a virtual channel frame count. So the master channel is everything, all frames, and you can split this um, into several virtual channels. Basically, this is then the virtual channel ID is just a number. Uh, and uh, so, for example, you logically you group data. For example, zero virtual channel zero is most of the time housekeeping data of the satellite itself. So from from uh, the onboard computer and and the, the platform itself. Uh, virtual channel 1 and virtual channel 7 are often used. Virtual channel 1 is then mostly scientific data or something like that and also payload data and virtual channel can be for example a high-speed data link so for, for large images or something like that. Um, okay then you have a flag if the secondary header is present. We will ignore that for now because um, uh, it's it's very seldom to use them, and we don't want to complicate it as, as much, uh, more than possible. The, uh, necessary, not possible. <laughs> it's always possible to complicate things more. So, uh, we have a sync flag, a packet order flag, which we will probably ignore. Then we have a segment length ID, which was important but is not used that much. Uh, there is somewhere a note further down in the document that is not used anymore. So uh, uh, there was, um, if you have larger packets, then you could segment them and and um, have multiple smaller packets, and this ID specifies them. Uh, the length of these segments, but um, we, we won't care about this for this. And then we have the first header pointer, which we will have to deal later. And uh, yeah, my old friend. And um, then we have just the deprecation data, which is then again binary data for now. And then we will pass that into a into packet, and then the packet, uh, the content of the packet will will then be passed into parameters, which we can then extract and visualize. Uh, display somehow. So. Okay, so uh, basically same approach with the NCTRS. So we will just create a new file with the DM frame. So I want to split this a little bit, so we we will have um, a, a frame header. So we pass the header extra. Then we would have a secondary header, but uh, we don't use it, so I just ignore it. And we have the, the frame data, which is uh, let's also make this strict. Uh, the frame data, which is a byte string. Uh, then we have um, uh, up the OCF and as this OCF can be optional um, uh, we have a maybe of uh, let's see the the this is a, a four octet so it's a 32 bit integer actually it's, it's also some bits packed together but uh, for now we call it a little bit of 32 and um, uh, then we have the frame C or C, let's say. Uh, for now, let's let's do it like this. So um, for the CSC check, we will do it in the next episode. So for now, it's OK. Yeah. Of course, then we need a team frame header. And if this gets boring to you on YouTube, just uh, set the, the, the play speed of the video to 1.25 or 1.5, and then it's not so boring anymore. So, okay, frame, uh, frame header, uh, we have first the version. And um, so now, um, even if you have this bit packed, we now did for easy access and for faster access. <laughs> We will unpack this information into into smallest units. So this would be a word eight uh, for now. 
uh, actually we, we don't need this information um, currently we don't need to read it we don't need to encode it it's just there that for example the the, the header version uh, here is a description then of the bits and the, the header version the stupid field shall identify the data under this transfer frame it shall be set to zero so that's basically just that you can then afterwards check if the frame is correct so if you have a correct frame uh, parsed um, so then we have the spacecraft ID which is 10 bits uh, so we will pack, unpack this into into a uh, word 16 then we have the virtual channel ID and the operational control flag so the virtual channel ID is the word 8 for now um, the OCF flag is a bool Actually, we probably wouldn't need that. We would only need that for for um, encoding, and even then, because we have the maybe here. So, uh, actually, let's just get rid of it. So, if there is something, we have an operational control for it, and if there's nothing, we don't have it. So, it's a little bit cleaner. So, it's not a one-to-one -one translation. Then we have a master channel and the virtual channel frame count. Um, so. Master channel frame count. This is also a word eight. And if you wonder why this is just a word eight, so this is a value of a byte. It's 256 values with zero. So uh, these these are re uh, overlapping counters. So um, uh, if they go to 255 and then they start from zero again, uh, they are just a bit, uh, only one byte because um, yeah, because of space reasons. For the packets itself, they didn't have have a fourteen bit counter, um, uh, but on the frame level, we, we just have two hundred fifty five values. Then we have two flags: the transfer frame secondary header flag. We won't pass that because we don't need it. The sync flag and the order flag we just ignore for now. Same with the segment length. So then, but the important thing is the first header pointer. We will need this on further extractions. Uh, I will explain what it is and next time. Um, probably and this is 11 bits so we will just made a FHP just make it a word 60 okay so that's that's the first thing so then let's just also export this team frame header so that we can use it as other models uh, add this to the Kabal file, so um, TM frame. I'll restart GHCID and okay, all good, very good. Um, so next thing, of course, we need to parse this data again, and uh, uh, let's let's try to start. First, uh, we'll pass the frame header. So we make a TM frame header parser, which is a parser of the TM frame. Of course, what else? So um, if you if you have again a look here, so you see this see this is two octets. So this is a 16-bit value. Then have one octet, one octet, and two octets. This is how it is grouped. Uh, and this is exactly what we will read, and then we will do some bit manipulation to get this data out. So, yeah, and I will explain that as we go. So, uh, first we need the, the word one. I call it just one for now. Uh, I'm bad with naming. If you haven't seen this, uh, now you know. So, any word 16, big endian again. Uh, then we have the master channel frame count which is in any word 8, then we have a uh, virtual channel frame count, which is in any word 8, and then we have again the word 2, which is in any word 16b. So this is the, the, the first thing to do, and uh, now it starts to get interesting, so we need then to do this, um, to get this, this, this bits values out. Uh, um, so if you don't know, um, if you know bit operations, you can skip this section if you don't know them. Then just a small thing. So um, to get these bits out, um, 
you you use then uh, uh, bit operations like and uh, binary and binary or shifting operations and so on to get this. So the thing is, um, we have this uh, 16 bit. We want to get the the um, the highest two bits. Um, so the normal thing is what you do, you mask the other bits out so that they are zero and just these two bits stay and then you shift the whole thing to the right and then you cast this in, in C and C, C++ you would cast this to, to, to another value. In this case it's a 16 bit and we want to have this in an 8 bit so we will then do a from integral. So um, why this is so? Um, if you have uh, just a quick look, uh, I've just prepared in Emacs some some tables. So, for example, for the for the end operation, how this works is if you have an input, two inputs A and B, and you have uh, zeros and ones going in binary. So, uh, we have um, uh, the binary end is only one when both of them are one, and then the other ones are zero. Yeah. Uh, so this means if you if we, um, so so let's uh, let's uh, imagine that b is the value we have here. This is this the bit of this uh, 16 bit where we just read. This is one of the bits of them, and this is uh, some kind of mask which we can specify. So if the mask is zero, then you see the output will always be zero, no matter what this value is. And if the mask is one, then the output will reflect the content of b. And this is exactly what we want. We just want to have the value of these number of bits that we want, and uh, not more. So, uh, so if the if the if the if this one bit in the in the read word is zero, then we will get a zero, and if it's one, we get the one. If we end it with this, yeah. Uh, the or the binary or is the exact opposite. So. Uh, if one, at least one of them is one, then you get a one, and otherwise uh, you get a zero. So basically, you get the zero only when both are zero. So uh, this, the or is used if you want to set separate bits. So um, if you have, for example, so again, this is a word in which we want, for example, to set uh, one of the bits, and. Um, uh, so if you if you if you then or it with 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 a one. Uh, no matter what value it was before, the bit will be set. Um, so, bit set is or bit uh, uh, delete or mask so that we get just a specific range out is an end operation. And um, yeah, this is what we will use now. And the thing is, Haskell provides some 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 utilities which make this a little bit more easier because otherwise you would have to to deal with hexadecimal notation and exactly calculate how the values are. But we have these uh, um, extensions enabled in the binary literals and the numeric underscores, and this helps a lot with this binary operation. So let's see. We want to first have the version. Uh, version. And uh, yes, so this is the, the most significant two bits of this first word. So that's easy. So we want to watch the, the first word, which is uh, w1, which we have read here. And then we want to have um, the, the upper two bits. So we end this, binary end this, with a binary literal. So we want to have the first, the highest two bits set. And then we group this with four bits. Yeah. And uh, then we want to, to shift this to the right. So we we didn't have a, a quite high value if there would be something said. So it, we now know that uh, they will be most probably zero. But uh, for example, some protocol extensions used in a different version number so that they can uh, identify something is different in the protocol. Uh, so uh, if we shift it to the right, so we need to shift it then 14 bits to the right. And then these two bits will end up here. And this is exactly then what we want. And it's not a high number, so it's a version number from 0 to, in this case, 2 bits uh, so for, from 0 to 4, uh, 3. 0 based, 0 index. So uh, so we shifted right to 14 bits. And then we have this. And we will probably also need a from integral, because um, this is a word 16. This is a word 16, and this, after the shift, it's still a word 16, and we have uh, a word 8 here. So uh, let's also start. Then we want to return a tm frame header, 
and uh, let's just copy the fields from there. Do, do, do. Something like that. And uh, the frame header version will then be version. So one field set, so a few others to go. Uh, so same principle. Uh, we then have um, the spacecraft ID, which is the next 10 bits. So if we align this a little bit, uh, it's then uh, we, the thing is 10 bits. So we will we, we store them also in a word 16, if I remember. Yes, it was 16. So this is the same type. We don't need the from integral. So we, we just do the same thing. But now we have a different mask. So we will have the version number we are not interested in anymore. So then have two and then eight more bits. And the lowest four bits are zero. Right? Ten bits and three bits, four bits is four, uh, three bits and one bit is four bits. Yes. So it should be okay. And then we shift right this for uh, four bits and then these bits will then be in the in the in the lowest bits, and then we have a correct number. Otherwise, the number would be too high. Um, something like this. Let's format it. Then we have um, next. We have so as you see, the, the the rest is then easy. We have then the virtual channel ID and the operational control flag in the in the lowest four bits. So. Um, the virtual channel ID of uh, three bits. So we have um, uh, W1 and it with oops, and the last bit is zero. And then we we shift that uh, shift right this by one bit. And then we have the flag, uh, the operational control flag, and the OCF flag. And the OCF flag is then simply W1. And we could write this out, but yeah, just for consistency, let's do this. Yeah. We don't need to shift it anymore. It's already in the right position. So the thing is uh, here now, um, uh, what we what I want to have is a Boolean value and not a, a word. So the only thing we need is uh, we check it if it's uh, not equal to zero and then we get a Boolean value. So a true or false. Yeah, that's what we want. And if this is true, then we will read the, the OCF, this maybe. And if it's false, then we just skip it. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's that's the one thing. Then we have the the frame counts, and then we have the second word, which is um, what do we have here? We just need the first header pointer, which is eleven bits. Yeah. Uh, we I said to, for now we don't care for these bits. We could then, if they are needed, then we can um, we can use them later. So, for example, in 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 the the main project I'm working privately RS, which is a mission control system, also in Haskell, you can find also the repo on GitHub. We extract these values and we use them. And we also handle this segmentation, this segmentation length, which I talked about before, um, because all the missions used it, but for now we don't care. So uh, what we also need then is the first header pointer, which is also a 16-bit value. So we and the low 11-bit, of um, uh, so let's see this is the, the low four bits then we have eight bits and then we have eight nine ten eleven zero and this should be the value right so uh, okay then we set the spacecraft ID is the skid the VCID uh, for the VCID is uh, we, will, we will, will also have to do a from integral. Okay, formatting doesn't work anymore. Bad. 
Okay, uh, the VCID, then the the LORP, um, the MCFC we have read here, and then we have the virtual channel frame count, the virtual channel frame count, and then we have the the first header pointer. And uh, yeah, okay. Then of course we don't have import. We need to import at the parsec. What's wrong? Couldn't find data. Ah, too silly to type. Um, and then, of course, yeah. So, so this binary end. This is uh, in in the uh, in the base file in data bits. And of course, yes. I forgot also again. Like in the same, the data auto parsec binary uh, no not not ion binary yeah for this and then define but not use the OC OCF flag uh, actually um, we need to pass that out so that the OCF is then read on in, in a different location um, not for the for the header parser itself so let's make this uh, a bool and a team frame header and uh, uh, pure then the OCF flag and then the frame header. Yep, compiles. Very good. Uh, and also, of course, I want... Uh, Let's let's let it show for now. We will also it's the same with the NCTRS units. We want to just want to show them, and um, um, okay. So that's the first thing. We have the header, and then we have to pass the frame. So that was easy. Um, TM frame parser, which is a parser TM frame. Uh, okay, so the first thing, of course, we have to pass the header. So now we have the OCF flag and the header is when we parse uh, TM frame header parser. So that's what it's called. Uh, then we have um, just mm, Just copy this down. Uh, and we also have see the field names, the frame header, and the frame header will then be of course header. Uh, then we have the data, and we have again this a take, and then we need some number, and we currently don't know this number because there's nowhere if as you see in the NCTR setup we had a length specified, but we don't have a length here. So. Um, We'll keep this, uh, uh, I will come to that in a moment. The next thing is, when we have an OCF flag, then um, we have to return this OCF, so an any word 32 big end in, uh, and uh, let's call this OCF. And, um, Let's just insert no, let's it undefined for now. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, okay, no, let's make an if. And if we have this OCF flag, then we return in any word, else we pure, uh, and, and also this is a maybe value, so we wrap it into a just, and otherwise we, we just return nothing. So this should be then that. This should be the OCF. And then we have the CRC, which is easy. In this case, CRC is a uh, get an any word 16 PE for now. Um, CRC. 
uh, of course deriving show is not correct here let's save um, uh, okay no this is wrong this is a 16-bit value and also let's make this strict so maybe we can't make strict uh, yeah so you would use I have to use the optional type which has a strict uh, field inside uh, for now it's okay so um, yeah compiles we have the tm frame header parser uh, we have the tm frame parser should be okay the thing is now what do we do here so the thing is the length of the tm frame is fixed but this can be mission specific so actually what we need to do is um, the most common value is 1115 bytes uh, why exactly this value? Because when the satellite sends down the telemetry transfer frame, it's inside a read Solomon encoded block, and the data block size of this is typically uh, uh, without the read Solomon's header and trailer and so on. It's this 1115 bytes that's left. But there are missions which have fewer, so for some missions have 512 bytes and so on. And the thing is, you need to configure that. So that's a, a thing we, we, we have in the config. Um, so let's change to the config file and uh, so we have a config tm frame length and we make this uh, uh, for now let's make it a word 16 we could restrict this somehow also on the type level but for now I don't I'm not sure if I want to go that route for now so the default um, for the default config of course then we have a config tm frame length the default length is 115 bytes um, okay compiles write config read config is okay um, good uh, so the thing is now we need this config here so uh, this parser then needs of course a config type And this also means that we need to import the config here. Okay, compiles, but it's not used. Right, that's right. So um, we need to somehow um, somehow calculate the length then. So the data part, we need to take this, this a take undefined here. This a take should take the, only the data part. So this is basically the whole frame length minus the header, minus a secondary header, which we don't have, minus the OCF if it is present, and minus the CRC. So um, let's just define a function called data len. So it should take the config, it should take um, uh, the tm frame header uh, and then it should return an int probably let's have a look config header so we have uh, so the, the whole value is then in the, defined in the config the, the complete land is the config tm frame land so let's just copy that so we have the complete land uh, uh, config and um, cast this already to an int. Um, so we have an int and from this number we have then to subtract the header length. The header length is easy because we have uh, two octets, uh, three, four, uh, five, six octets. So there the is uh, six, the header length. Let's make this explicit, header length Six and this is an an int. Uh, secondary header length we don't have. Then in case uh, we have uh, in minus the OCF len and minus CRC len. So the CRC len we will also define here. Length is two bytes, sixteen bit. So this just makes it a little bit more explicit length and the OCF len we, we, we need to calculate so where the OCF len if um, if we have the OCF like set 
Uh, so, so basically, uh, we don't need the full frame header, we just need the pool here. So uh, this is um, the OCF flag. If OCF flag, then uh, the size is 4, else the size is 0. Uh, And then um, let's just call this function here, calc data land with the config and the OCF flag. I think it should be okay. Then yes, and then depending also on this flag, it will be red or not. And then we have the CSC value. Yes, okay. Oh, uh, sorry. Compiles, very good. So we have the TM frame parser. Um, and then let's export this parser. Okay. So now we should get some data values for the TM frame. Uh, so the next thing would be to have a conduit. Um, and for now, uh, for the NCTRS, we added the conduit directly here in the parsing itself and on the data structure. I don't want to do this for the TM frame because this would couple this module of TM frame to the NCTRS module. And theoretically, there could be other input types. So for example, SLE protocol also transfers frames and some parts of the Eden protocol also transfer uh, frames. So I don't want to have this there. So I will make an external a new file. Uh, let's call it uh, um, TM frame. No, in CDU to TM frame, something like that. Not exactly pretty name, but as you know, I'm not good at naming. Module. Huh, why doesn't this work? In CDU to TM frame. So and here we import the NCTRS and we import the TM frame and we import with import import conduit and we import uh, conduit uh, data conduit at parsec data conduit at parsec. Okay, and what we want to have, okay, let's just let it edit this, add this to the cover file. So ncdu to tm frame. Uh, yes, and um, so what we want to have is a conduit, uh, ncdu to tm frame conduit, which is a conduit t. We get an NCDU TM, and what we want to have is a TM frame. Yep. Uh, let's have a monad IO. We will print this again. Maybe we should add the logging at the next episode. Ah, so. Uh, okay. So. Let's try if we can do a wait forever. Then we get a NCDU. So what to do with this NCDU? Um, let's have a look at the data structure from the NCTRS again. So the NCDU TM has uh, this data here. This is what we need to parse. The thing is, um, so in the NCDU, there is exactly one telemetry frame. So the data part should be exactly one telemetry frame, not more, not less. Um, uh, so we could simply parse that. But uh, in this case, we also need to pass along uh, some other values, so which are not in this binary data. So for example, we need this uh, Earth reception time, possibly the quality flag. Uh, Maybe the stream type, not the stream type, I don't think we will pass it along, but at least the earth reception time and the quality. So um, as this is not part of the TM frame itself, we need some kind of metadata assigned to the TM frame. So let's also define this here. So we have, um, let's call this TM frame meta. 
It's also a bad name, but anyway. So what do we have here? Of course we have um, we have the frame himself. This is the TM frame, and then we have the meter, the ERT, which is uh, which should be UTC time in this case. Um, so we just convert this then and um, meta quality, which is a quality flag, something like this. And now we have we want to return this meta information and not the frame only. And then of course we need to uh, we had to import data time clock. No, here we are. Data time clock, so that we get this. Uh, and okay, compile. So, um, how to construct this? So first, um, we of course need to parse the binary value. So the binary value of the NCDU is called again NCDU data. So let's get out. NCDU data of the NCDU, then we have the byte string. This byte string should contain the TM transfer frame. So um, we will pass that and we now cannot use the conduit because uh, it does also is not necessary because we have already a, a discrete packet information. So we will use uh, the, the pass function of autoparsec directly. Let's see, oh, data autoparsec byte string. We will use a parse function. And so the normal pass, you have a fail, a partial already done. And in this case, we are only interested in this pass only function that returns an either with an error message or the parse thing. And so it takes a parser uh, and the byte string. So the byte string, this is the byte string. So we will have parse only. And uh, then we need the parser and the parser we have defined already here. This is the team frame parser. The frame parser, the byte string, and then we get the result. If we have an error, again we do our very unilligent put through line and uh, error parsing tm frame uh, error, uh, and we need to, to pack this because this is text and uh, error is a string. Um, yes, and then we need, of course, uh, again, import this stuff. Uh, let's just do this like here, the real text, and I don't have it here. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, we have it here. So let's just import this also here. Oh, was I in the wrong file? Hmm. Yes, uh, sorry for that. <laughs> okay, and then we have um, variable not in scope, parse only. So this should be part of data, uh, not import. Ah, uh, yeah, we don't need this. We need um, data auto parsec. Okay, and then we cannot match the type, of course. Um, T boot through line is in IO, and we are in a, a conduit T mono transformer. So, this again. Uh, and of course, yes, uh, the, the parser needs, of course, a config. So, we need to somehow pass in the config. Uh, let's do this like this first. And of course, then we also need to import the config. Right, so we then have some, some, um, yeah, okay. First, uh, let's export this. And then we have, of course, unmatched cases. So this was just the error case. So in case we have a parsed value, which is a frame, we, we construct a, a TM meta frame from this. Um, T 
tm frame meter. Let's see, the meter ERT is uh, with NCDU ERT from the NCDU. But uh, as you remember, this is a CDS time, which we get back, so we need to call this to UTC time function on this, which will not work as we haven't implemented that. Um, then we have the meta quality, which is the NCDU quality from the NCDU. And then we have the meta frame, which is then the parsed frame. So we have a meta and then we just yield this downstream. So this gets passed out the right side of the pipeline and uh, that's it. Oh, okay, variable not in scope to UTC time, CDS time to UTC time. Yes, of course, um, we haven't implemented it and we also need to import the CDS time. Import config, import CDS time, and let's also group our own files together. Um, and we need to export this conduit. And we're good. So the last thing to do is uh, to convert this time. Um, Let's go back to the CDS time. So this is now undefined. Um, first, let's do a pattern match. So CDS time, we get the CDS time with the days, milli and micro. And we want to have a UTC time. So um, let's look up what the UTC time looks like. So we need the, the time package. Oh, whoa. Contents. Data time clock. Um, UTC time is measured by clock. To have by adding or removing questionable seconds with leap seconds. This correction are not predictable and announced. No table of this correction is provided in the long It could become days of six months. If you don't care about leap seconds, use UTC time and nominal diff time for your clock calculations. Yes. So for currently, normally we would have to care about the leap seconds, but for now let's uh, just uh, don't care for them. Uh, the CDS time itself uh, also doesn't have leap seconds, but we have a conversion routine which takes them into account. Um, uh, and so not in this project, but in another project. So in normal, in other projects, you have three uh, layers of of the time. So one is the CDS time is the encoding layer. So how the, the time is really encoded in binary streams. Then you have a layer which does the epoch calculation and also can do time shifts. Because if you want to make a simulation in the future, uh, something like that, then you need to shift the time. And then you have a third time, which is the application time, which is then displayed and, and used from the user of the, so, so in the user interfaces and so on. So um, we, will, we won't do this here. So we just want to have the UTC time. So this has uh, also a day information and then a diff time. And um, so the diff time is the time from midnight, which is uh, uh, t, zero, t, 80 seconds because of leap seconds, yes. And um, so let's see how we can create this. And I have said I, I tried this before because I, I cheated a little bit. So um, let's see. Okay, so um, I had uh, I did a little bit cheat. Uh, I had to look this up before because this took quite some time to get this uh, somehow. So we will have we will will have some values, and then we want to generate a UTC time, which has a number of days, and then the D time, which is this the time of the day inside this day. So um, the thing is, if we go to data time again, so this day is. Uh, a modified Julian day is a standard count of this, with the zero being the day 1958 and the 17th of November. So uh, nice date. Um, and um, the thing is, how 
we have also a number of days in our CDS time structure, if you remember. But this is the number of days from the 1st January of 1958. So um, I just uh, looked up a day calculator and calculated the difference for this. So um, um, so uh, let's say we call this an epoch epoch day for uh, 1958. And this is uh, a modified Julian day. And the value is 36,204. So just Google the day, day calculator, entered the two dates and the difference between them is the number of days between them. So let's see if this calculation is correct. We will, if the, if the values we get out are strange, then we will see that. Uh, Okay, and then we need to, uh, the, for this day, we need to add days. Uh, this uh, from integral days from the from the CDS time. So this days is, is the days from the CDS time. And we add, uh, so we convert this to a day value and then add this epoch day. And then we should have basically this day field for the UTC time, hopefully. And um, also this diff time, uh, there is a diff time, there is a function which converts from picoseconds to diff time, as you can see. So we need some kind of, of picoseconds, and let's call them pico. And how do we define them? So we need to, uh, somehow this million microseconds, we just need to calculate them together and then uh, uh, convert them into picoseconds and then use this. So uh, the milliseconds uh, from integral milli, uh, we can we multiply them with 1000, so then we get them get it into the range of the microseconds. Then we add the from integral integral microseconds. Then we have the complete time information from our side, and then we need to to multiply this so that we get to picoseconds. So we have milli, micro, uh, nano, and then pico. So we have uh, 1000, 1000. So this is one, one million. And then we get the pico, and we have a typo here. Variable not in scope, add days. Yes, of course. So we need to somehow uh, import this. And we have this, this is in data time calendar, I think. And it compiles surprisingly, okay. Well, then let's have a look if this works. So we have now the conversion um, and then we want to have the Okay, something's wrong with my. Oops. Why didn't it switch? Don't know. Okay. Um, so uh, we should then, of course, we want to see this then. So we derive a show instance. And as an additional point, so uh, if you remember when we had a look at this. Uh, while it's, it's somehow readable, it doesn't look that pretty. So would I just want to have a little bit more indication of what we actually see here. So um, I want to use a package called uh, a th uh, pretty show. Uh, okay, it doesn't switch anymore. Ooh, I, I probably need to restart Visual Studio. Okay, I had to restart Visual Studio, I don't know why. No idea what happened. Anyway, so... Um, we derive this show, then we want to add um, the package. Let's have a quick look, look at um, the package. I think it's called pretty show. Yeah, so it shows the values pretty. <laughs> and there you have to use then the pp show. Instead of show, you use pp show. And you can also use pp print. And that's exactly what we need. So um, 
let's go to main. So now we have, um, uh, we want to import this ncdu to tm frame. And um, uh, here we have our conduit chain. So we just got this NCTRS uh, NCDUs and piped them to print. So now we, we, we pipe them to, to NCDU to, uh, I forgot how it's called. Just copy this, main NCDU to GM frame. And um, uh, we need, this needs the config. This needs the config, yes. So we need to pass it the config. Uh, and currently we have, don't have the config here, so. And then we get, of course, a compile error. So uh, we need also to pass the config. So the config we get either from the, as you remember, either from the config file or from the default config. And uh, so, um, uh, yep. Then also, of course, here. And also, of course, here for the looping. And then we have a TM frame metadata with void. Yes, of course. Then we have to pipe this to some thing. And now we uh, uh, just get rid of this. Just copy that, comment it, and then rename that to pretty show conduit, something like that. Doesn't matter. So, and uh, so what we get is then a PP print, is it called? Text show P print, P print only. Okay. P pretty print. Um, and this is not a, let's just call it an X. And uh, okay, pass error. Yes, of course, uh, pretty show C. Couldn't match type byte string with, uh, yes, of course, we don't, uh, we, we give it an A, and this A should have a show instance. And then we, of course, have to import the pretty print function. So this is text show pretty. And very good. So now we have, it compiles. So we should get a pretty print of the available TM frames in this NCTU units. So let's see if this is really the case. So stack, stack run. Let's start the server again. Oh, pretty show, sure we forgot it. Mm -hmm. For the main, yes, that's right. Um, we added it for the, for the, for the library, but we need also, we need it also in main. So in the, actually we only need it in main, but anyway. So. Okay. Compiles, linking, running, Woo! and we have data, lots of data. And uh, so what we see here, we get this TM frame meta and we get the earth reception time, which is 2020, the 12th June of 2020, 1942. So this looks good. Yeah, this is, this can be right. This could be, could be the right time uh, when this file was generated. The quality is good. We have then the frame itself. The frame header, the version is zero as expected. Spacecraft ID is 151, which we also had in the NCDUs. The virtual channel ID is zero. The frame count, master channel frame count is 1536. Let's have a look. We have here 13 to 15. So there was something in between on another virtual channel probably. And we have 135, 136. So they are in line with each other. So they are counting up, that's good. Frame header pointer is zero. That's also good. And then we have the frame data itself. And we have this OCF, which is present. And we have then some kind of CRC value. 
So I'm happy with that goal for today reached. Uh, next things will then be it will get a little bit more complicated um, as we go along. So because then the next step would be uh, based on the virtual channel to make parallel extraction chains. So and then we use threading and standard transactional memory uh, and for, for the whole extraction and then finally also some kind of interface then we want to create a graphical user interface to how then display the data. Um, so I think this will be in several videos more. Okay, so thanks for watching. Have fun.